if it's made a HMI and a PL, which is here on the uh, right side of the simulator. This is my HMI. It's simulating a solar Saturn turbine, about a 750 kW turbine. It's a mechanical governor, so it doesn't uh, control the fuel, except indirectly. It's made by uh, advanced HMI. So it's the HMI fuel basic, which is free software. And you, you program it in uh, Visual Basic. This these this company, Advanced HMI, has made controls that really you just load on the page, and then you uh, customize it. So it's a development environment in Visual Studio, which is which has Visual Basic in it. So here we are, and then this is my company, Fitzco. So this is the main page. Let's start at the top here. So I have a speed indication, a T5 temp indication, T7 temp. Then these uh, green blocks turn red when they're activated. So right now I have a malfunction of some kind. Um, then here I have start or run since the start relay is, is also when it drops out, you've tripped. So it's a run relay. Uh, the starting motor, the fuel pump, the ignition, which is to say spark plug, and flame, which in this case is just the T5 above 400 degrees. Three speed relays, the field flash flashing logic, and then here's the breaker closed. So the breaker, to give you an idea how this works, the breaker closed is just off the simulator. So if I press these DI buttons, it's programmed to go into the to be read via Modbus as breaker closed here. So then I have a stop button. Solar Saturn world are called malfunctions. I have a start button and then lower speed load or raise speed load. So let's see what happens when we hit reset here. Oh, our malfunction clears. Well, that's good to see. So I also have an alarm page. There aren't currently any alarms. Let's see if we can come up with one. Yeah, we got an over voltage there, don't we? And now this will stay in the alarm history. So when I reset the alarm, this will stay in the alarm history, which helps the operator. He can see what happened uh, previously. So let's go back to the main menu. First, we'll clear the field condition. Then we'll hit reset. And our malfunction cleared, didn't it? So now I come back here. See, it's still in the historian, but it's not in the. This is pretty much. When they control a turbine with Wonderware, with a Wonderware HMI or a factory talk, it basically works like this. You can see the past alarms. And here's here's our trends. So this unit is very small. It only has three analog signals: turbine temperature, exhaust temperature, turbine speed. You can zoom out. You can zoom in. You can Go previous back in time. You can go forward in time. Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. So back to the main page. So let's let's start this unit and see how it would operate. So in my um, simulation software, I put uh, a couple ramps, actually three ramps for the analog signals. I did speed, T5 temp, and T7. So roughly speaking, uh, mimic a startup. Okay, so when your malfunctions are cleared, you're, it's ready to start. So right now, when I hit start, well, guess what? 
my speed starts coming up because my starter, my start relay held, my start motor came in, my fuel pump comes in, and my ignition come in. So it, on this turbine, yes, you start right away. You just turn the fuel pump and the ignition on because it only takes a few seconds to come up to 13% speed, which is your firing speed. I had a little bit of a hold here because most turbines don't fire right away. So we're, we're waiting for it to fire and we're at 20% speed. Let's see. Oh, my temperatures are coming up a little bit, right? Oh. So there must be some more energy getting in there. So, wow, there's my speed coming up, isn't it? Wow. So now I'm starting. And my simulator might be a little bit out of sequence because by now we're at about 43%. Uh, around 60%, I think I'm going to detect flame, which is probably a little bit late in real life, but on, in simulator world, that's okay. See, my, my igniter went off, but and I don't have flame, but I'll have flame here in a second. Boom, flame. Um, I'm flashing the field now because you you flash uh, later. This will go off when you hit 90 percent. 100% speed. So let's let's trip this guy. Hmm. So malfunctions are trips. So any any trip I put in here is, will you know trip it. That was the original logic. So let's do a trip. Let's do a different one. How about this X1? Let's see what happens. Well, every, all my speed indicators went off. All my uh, devices that you run to start are off. And my simulator goes to zero speed very quickly. Let's see what actually happened. Huh. Low lube oil pressure. So that's my X1. Well, and see, I still have, although I cleared my alarms here, I still have my over voltage alarm from 1549. So, so let's push in our X1 again. So we've cleared the field condition. Whoops, I got my wrong one here. Main menu. Then we hit reset. Oh, all of our alarms cleared. So now we're ready to go again but notice i cleared the alarms but in my alarm history i still have now let's go back to trends uh zoom out zoom out zoom out zoom out zoom out oh i see the problem there so what was the problem? I was zooming out. I previously set the time way back. So I go to end and now it's at the present time and there's my recent startup. So red is my speed, my speed. I had a little bit of time here to fire off and it went up to full speed. My simulator has T5 go up uh, faster than the exhaust temperature, which would be right. T5 is a turbine temperature. Um, I made I times turbine speed times 100 so I could fit them all in the same scale. And then when I tripped the unit, it went back. So let's say I want to zoom in. Um, there you go. I'm zooming in. If I want to move this way. Let's move this way. Oh, I can't even see it now. So I better zoom out, zoom back. There. Zoom in, see, there's zoom in. I can look at this closer. Go over here, hit zoom in, zoom in again. There I can see much closer detail. Then this,
program also has a logging function that puts it into a text file and you can import the numbers from a text file and see them in Excel. So you can plot old data in Excel. And uh, so there's our uh, trend. I showed you the alarm page and this is the, the main page, back to the main page. So the good thing about, one of the good things about advanced HMI is it just runs on a, besides being free and having free software, no runtime license, no development license, is it, it runs on Windows 10, right? You're not, um, so you can, you can buy your own PC and uh, run it on any PC. So if your PC breaks, you have to reload the software, but you can actually buy a spare computer down at Walmart or someplace and uh, run it till you get your, your touch screen or everything back. Um, excellent. And the do more, the do mores can be, PLCs could be, one for this level would probably be about $500. That's what I, what I'm, you know, I'm putting some numbers together. Uh, and you, you could probably get the, well, it's hard to say the price on the PC and the screen, but relatively cheap. And I think it's an excellent system. I think it's, in terms of reliability, it's, it's as good as the, um, you know, Wonderware and Factory Talk and Alan Bradley. So do more is, is uh, Automation Direct, which is Koyo in a lot of the world. And they have, you know, a lot of people use their PLCs. They're getting faster and cheaper all the time. And I think between the two, you could make a very good control system. Okay, I hope you can... Uh, if you want more information, just leave a message on my YouTube channel, or you can call me at 808-218-8782. And my email is fitzcoLLC at yahoo.com. That's F-I-T-Z-C-O-L-L-C at yahoo.com. Thank you and bye.